hello everyone this video I'm going to talk about the new upgrades made to the Cessna 170B I have not flown it much since January lots of things were done to the airplane so I'm going to show you in detail which are the upgrades and what do they do this airplane is very different than original already has the 180 horsepower like coming 0360 empty propeller stall kit VGs so it was already modified and performed really good this is one of the first ground bars I'm landing in six months this is a Skytic River I can already feel that the airplane performs better. In the next scene you will see an instrument that was installed. It's the U Avionics AB30. It was installed to play the directional gyro and it's an amazing instrument. Very small, very light, but very complete and I really like it. This is a landing into Fall City Airport in Washington. This is landing to the west. As you can see, plenty of obstacles. We have the power lines and the tall trees just before the start of the runway. You can clearly see the AB30 to the right and to the top. Most of the time we land from the west, but when there is a tailwheel that is like a quarterly tailwheel with the tailwheel airplane I prefer to have a headwind than a quarterly tailwheel so we can choose this approach so first we're going to talk about the U Avionics AB30 about the install and how does it work. Okay, here we are in Spana Flight in Puyallup, Washington with Mike. We're going to install the AB30. Um, this can be used, installed as a DG or a attitude indicator. Uh, what is the, the installation like? Yeah, so the installation is very, very simple. It's going to take me about four to five hours for a DG installation and you can probably plan on 12 to 13 if you're doing a dual um, certified installation. And basically we're going to do um, power and ground to a two amp circuit breaker in the airplane and we're going to hook up the pedostatic system. Now for a DG there is a little, so it comes with a kit um, with a basic D sub connector and it's a 13 pins. And, and you just wire up per the wiring diagram. Okay, um, sounds good. Yeah. Let's go to it. Thank you. Sounds good. So uh, in older aircraft like this 170B, um, they use aluminum pedostatic uh, tubes instead mm -hmm. of the polyflow. This is in most normally um, manufactured airplanes today, probably 70 onward. Um, so you'll have to com convert these are polyflow receptacles. You'll have to convert the aluminum tubing to a polyflow line here on the end, okay. which we did through a number of adapters. And okay. Yeah. And it goes in here. Yeah. Okay. Here we can see Mike under the instrument panel working out the installation. Something I like about this instrument is like you just take out the old DG and just put this one in. You don't have to modify the panel. Okay, after we've installed the AB30, um, to get into the um, install mode, you push the center button, push set, and turn on power. And you hold it all the way through the um, boot booting up mode. Now you can set parameters. Um, essentially, what you're going to do is you're going to hit this left menu button, 
you hit it until you get to install. And then you can rotate to select the function uh, of the gyro, either DG or AI, function lock. You go through here, you can set your trim settings, you can set your outside air temperature settings, your V-speeds. Um, this is how you'll get to your calibration menu. Um, come all the way over here, setting V-speeds. And like vibration monitoring, gyro cal, magnetic calibration for when you're ready to do a flight test. And then um, access the software and serial number. But that's how you get into the setup mode for the AV30. Excellent. Thank you. So final part of uh, just doing a calibration is uh, making sure the airplane is level laterally. Um, and then you can also, when you set your trim, you can level it longitudinally as well and, uh, and calibrate um, the instrument. Essentially do the same thing, push the, uh, the middle button while you're turning power on and you you set the calibration for the lateral and longitudinal level. Okay. Um, the only thing that uh, I experienced on this airplane install is the plumbing for the pedostatic system was aluminum, which is uh, trying to get aluminum to the poly flow fittings was a bit of a challenge, but uh, got it nailed now. And uh, The instrument itself is easy to install. The instrument itself is super easy to install. There's um, if you did everything, you got seven wires to install, and then and then plumb the pedostatic lines. That's awesome. that's is yeah. Awesome. Yeah. I'm excited for it. Thank you, Mike. Yeah, you're welcome. Okay. Here is a list of all the options for data. You cannot have all at the same time, but you can choose and program to have six. So there is plenty of information you can have on the AV30. Also very easy to change the data field. So in flight, I have a IRA 660 Garmin GPS and it's mounted low in the panel, so it's not in my view all the time. So I'm selecting a waypoint, it's a grass strip, it's Dubai. And now you can see it here in the HSI mode. The uh, AV30 is perfect for me because it's slave to the GPS or so whatever flight plan I put on the GPS it will show on the AV30. Also you have a backup artificial horizon. Hooking up the Garmin Aeron 660 to the AV30 was pretty easy and it works flawless. You can also adjust the heading bug in the AV30. This is arc mode. Here you can also adjust the scale and heading bug. And you also have the data information. Rose, which you align for the flight with the compass. So overall, very happy with this instrument. It's like four instruments in one and has lots of information. Works very nice and fits in the panel without doing any modifications. Plus, looks very good. You can also choose the style, it can be legacy, vintage, also you can choose the font. So this is a nice touch from UAvionics that you can customize your instrument to your liking, even the font and the face of the instrument. I want to thank Spana Flight in Puyallup, they did a great job with the installation and programming of this instrument. Now to the next modification, we are installing the Atlee Dodge folding seats. We are in Spanaflight, 
Pierce County, Washington. He did a great job. You have to install the rails and custom fit everything so it can slide very easily. The folding seats are lighter, very easy to remove and allows me to put two mountain bikes in the airplane. While working on the folding seat installation, we found out that the tail bracket was cracked. So the table experts are the landing wheel works in Renton Airport and I took the airplane there. Lots of disassembly was required to put the new tail bracket. Also at the landing gear works, the battery was removed and it was placed three feet back. With the engine conversion, the airplane was more heavy and I was flying with 70 pounds of ballast to compensate for that, so I have the sweet spot CG. We also installed an extended baggage compartment so now the battery is behind the extended baggage compartment. To be able to do this, we have to have a field approval. And by doing this, now I can fly without the ballast. So I save a lot of weight. And the CG is in the sweet spot, like if I was flying with all this ballast. So definitely was totally worth doing. Now, we're doing the weight and balance. You have to put the airplane in a flying attitude. This is a heavy 170. The tires alone are 72 pounds. The seats alone are like 60 pounds. I have extended fuel tanks, but it has really great performance. So I'm pretty happy with all the modifications. The Alaska baby boost wheel was tired, so it was time for a new one. So this video was mostly about technicalities and some upgrades. I'm really enjoying the 170 again and get to fly as much as I can. Hope you guys enjoyed this video and if you want to support Backcountry 182, please join me on Patreon. It is very easy to join. To be a patron of Backcountry 182, go to the YouTube channel on the right hand side, there is the link, and then it takes you to the patron page. Here you can see all the tiers and what is all about the support for Backcountry 182 YouTube channel. Also another way to access the Patreon link is in the description of the video I put in YouTube on Backcountry 182 channel there is a link for Patreon so just click on that and it will take you to the page thank you for watching it would be amazing if you guys are interested and give some support